Hi everyone, it's decorating time. So we've got our configurations book here. I have put in a binder here because I plan to put a book in there. Most of the stuff I use is going to be Tim Holtz. I want to give you a few other ideas of what you can actually do in there. For instance, if you haven't, because these are very hard to get, I don't even know if they make them anymore. But you can use your binder and, and make a book from in here and attach it. But another good way of making a book, a quick book, this isn't the right size. This is just to give you an idea of what you can do to get lots of real estate. As this is a notebook. And what I would do with that notebook, this is for a different project. But what I would do with that notebook is open it up. I would actually, like I said, the space isn't right for this particular one. Um, sometimes I will cut them down so that I can attach this piece to my actual project. And then I have all of these, this area here, this area here to, um, you can make something on so you can attach a tag and put it in there. And then you have all the notebook's pages. I just go and buy fine notebooks and sometimes what I do is I will glue the pages together so it makes them strong, remove some of the pages out of it so that when I come to embellish it I don't get this big fat waddy thing happening. But it's a quick way to attach something into a project and have lots of places to put photos journaling. But in this case I'm actually making my book and what I've done is I like to utilise my dies. We all have dies. And this one, for instance, is the suitcase die. It's not just for making a suitcase. Um, what is its actual name? I always forget the name. Vintage Valise. Uh, but I use this die for so many things. In this case, I'm actually going to use it a lot in this particular book that I'm making. The pieces that I'm going to utilise are um, this frame here, because I like the shapes of it. It's, it's got a nice wiggly edge and it makes a nice photo frame. And these strappings in here and these corners, that all cut out separately. And you can see over here I've, done, I've been playing a little bit and made a few. Um, you could recognise the um, straps here, which I'm going to be using through my book. And the corners, which I have actually cut out of metal and embossed using one of Tim's folders, doesn't matter which one, just one that will give you a pattern that you quite enjoy. Um, these ones I have covered with the ferro metal and then outlined using uh, my archival black ink, so I've got a little bit of detail in there. And these ones I've actually coloured up um, a little, but I've actually I've used Tim Holtz um, antique bronze paint and again put archival around. Now I'll be using these little bits through my print. Now all the papers through this are from um, Tim Holst's um, Wallflower range, but they've got beautiful images on this side. All these plain ones I've wanted to use because when I've got a photo going on top of it, it the, the, the rest of the beautiful pattern competes too much with what with the photo ends up looking messy. So I'm utilising all the backs of the quarter page pieces to make my book. I'm doing two different style pages, which you'll see me do, um, to go through the book. You can, um, and, and using all sorts of different products on them. For instance, you might have got some of the reinforcers. I, you could, for these pieces here that are going to join onto your project like so, um, use your metal grommets. But at this this stage I don't want to do that because my a lot of my some of my journaling is going to be up the top here and I'm going to use the not actually writing it myself although there will be some in there but the visible bits will be from the Tim Holtz Chit Chat stickers because they've got lots of beautiful words in there craft paper and the white paper that I'll be taking advantage of to put little headings on my photos they're not always the colour you want so you'll see me um, stamp over them like I have that's actually one of them one of these, quite a light one that I've stamped over, but I don't want them necessarily to be the same for all, all pages. I haven't really decided yet, so I'll do them two at a time as I'm going through. But just change them up. I mean, it's all about strength and making them wonderful. One of the pages is going to be with a photo on the front, some journaling, some of these, um, attaching it, giving it a little bit of interest. My daughter in law to be, um, it's a photo on the front, maybe, you know, 
uh, in added embellishment on one side. Um, and then the opposite side, and you've got to remember when you're doing this that you're flipping it up. So this is the orientation with the holes at the bottom. And I'm probably going to cover that whole thing um, like so. And I'm going to be using another one of Tim's products. So these are the uh, mini cabinet cards because they're fun. And you can see how this one's very different because I've changed it up. I'll be using this set of stamps through the project, which is Tim's um, slight alterations. I love the textures. I love the ones that I can add texture to photos and, and um, projects. And because this was a little light for me, and I might change the colour of the inks I'm using through as well, um, I have changed that up a bit and put some texture on there. And I've also, again, gone around the edges with my archival ink. The reason why you have to use archival ink is these have got that coating on, that smooth coating. Uh, Water-based inks will not cling to this. They won't stay there. So you're going to have to use your archivals um, to you know, make it stand out and do its thing. And I'm going to place that one of those on the back, but I'm also going to be able, that gives, will give me room for me to tuck um, a couple of tags under there. So that's how the format on one is going to be. The other page, you'll see me do this, I'll do a couple for you, just show you exactly what I've done. The other page, I'm using some of his cards. You get these, I don't know whether you can get these anymore, I've still got some in my shop, but uh, these are district market cards, and I'm using the Metropolitan one. And then here you get 12 cards, really good quality, and 12 really good craft envelopes, which I'll probably use for a mini at some stage. Um, and I'm going to do the same on the front, that same thing with the strapping and whatever other embellishments in a photo. And on the back, I, so I can get more real estate through my book, I'm going to use one of his cards that I can um, open up and I can put photos on or journal up here or two photos um, or, and put my journaling on here, which is going to be a tag that goes through um, the back. So that's the other orientation. That's the other one I'm going to do. So that's how the book is going to appear. Um, I can't think of anything else I need to tell you about that at the moment. And then we'll get straight on to decorating the boxes as soon as I've finished the book. because I didn't even remind myself 
when I was making this one, I actually put this piece of paper upside down. I managed to redeem it because um, it was a bird's nest, so I can still slide my tags in behind there once my glue's dried. Um, and it didn't really matter that it was upside down because it kind of had a beachy, driftwoody look to it. So we managed to do that. Um, I always like to put a little humongo tape or any other tape that you've got there that's quite strong over these pieces here. It just seems to buffer them a little and make sure that the paper clings down over them and you don't have any trouble later. so many different words in it to put little words on here textured around the photo texture around the edges and I will be getting ready to put that onto my base page which is the other side of this and I'll be leaving room it's a bit wet yet but I'll be leaving room so I can slide a tag down the back this is where I'm colouring up a tag. This tag is a Seven Gypsies tag that I've had in my stash for quite a while. I think it's from the conservatory range. Um, and I'm just changing them up to go into here. I'm going to stick that down there. This tag, I'll be using wet glue to attach this because I want to be able to slide a tag in and out. Um, mainly because if you use any sort of sticky scotch ATG uh, red line tape anything like that the, the edges of the tag can tend to stick up stick on them so I use wet glue to stick down these down but I wanted to make the tags the tags are all like this and have nothing on the back but I wanted them to tone out I've got this little picture of Jason that's going to go on the back back of the tag because he's the one that's all um, that's in all these adventure shots that where he's been skydiving and uh, white water rafting. Um, 
So what I've done is I've taken that tag, used the same stamp again from um, this Tim Holtz range. I tend to keep the same stamp going through. And I have used a sepia tone archival ink and put it on the back of the tag. I've coloured up my reinforcers on both sides. They just happen to have a little butterfly motive on them, which kind of goes with the front of this. Um, and then I have stamped around the edge of this little photo and coloured a little using lemonade um, archival just to bring it into the same tones. And I'm going to put it on there and I'll put a little message on there. And um, I don't know what I'm going to do here. I'll have some sort of tie there. And it'll slip through like so. And it's something else you can pull out. Um, you could do lots of journaling if you like on your backs of your tags. Just makes it interesting as you're going through the book. The only thing I haven't shown you, I think, with these ones, the format's the same, but I've used on this one the corners that I've made from the valise die, and I have used this um, frame, the um, mini cabinet cards, and slipped a photo in it. But I've used that same stamp again over the top with, with the sepia tone on this particular one. Um, so I don't think I need to show you any more about these. You'll just see them all at the end, all made and in the book. And I'll go on to be making the, the little compartments and decorating those up. Okay, we've started on the inside of the book. The stamping is from Tim Holtz Sets, Nature's Walk and Bird Feather. They're two different um, stamp sets. And the large egg I'm going to place down here. And the small eggs I'm placing across. This is just the cover page for the old one that's going to go through there. Um, I've done, made a similar bird cut out of his papers that I have had on the front where I'm going to three-dimensionalize it and put the eggs across, put a butterfly on there and have the heart and soul um, fab scraps words on the front of the book and then get into the the boxes. But with the stamping I have actually used archival inks in um, Viridian and Aquamarine and then I'll, over the top I've used either sepia or black because I like to texture mine probably a little bit more, add a little bit more colour in there. But you can, you get it just as great an effect from Evergreen Bower and Tumble Glass that looks great on there um, to make the eggs. But I, just a word, I would, the dots, because it's two separate stamps, one has the colour on it, one has the dots on it. If you're going to um, use anything, any product on top that will react with the water-based distress inks, um, it'll smudge all the detail you're putting on the eggs. So make sure you stamp the dots. I prefer to stamp my dots in the archival ink. It doesn't matter about the bottom. Because I like to use things like fast finish over the top of them. Your glossy accents, is that's... That won't move so much because it's going on there, but definitely the fast finish will. But another good way of doing it is to just use your distress inks and you can use embossing, clear embossing powder over the top. So that finishes off the book basically. I haven't stuck this down yet. Um, it's very important that they, these are actually great, these ideology reinforcers, because they tone in behind there and give you a nice base for around your where your eyelets where they're going to go through the ring binder makes it nice and strong I mentioned it earlier but we were stamping them but a lot of them you don't have to because they're all of similar tones and actually of actual papers of Tim Holtz they tone in beautifully if you don't want to mess with all those in my boxes I'm going to be putting one of his little mini lockets with an album in it that's going to have photos in it but if you refer back to one of my videos uh, I think it's called Colouring with Timol's Distress Inks on tags or something like that. It'll be in the list if you go to the channel. I've done a lot of work 
on um, using stamps and glass bead gels and uh, crackle paints on these. They're very quick to put out and I think I'm going to use some of these in the scenes back here as well as using some of these smaller pieces that come in the Wallflower book to line my um, boxes. Um, hopefully I'll get to do that pretty quickly but there's lots of them like these where we can put this in here say and have dragonflies and bits and pieces and the tones will go beautifully because I'm using the same inks with whatever I've got going on in my box here. Okay the first box I'm going to complete I've cut apart one of the tags I've made and I'll show you how to do that in a previous video. Um, I'm going to darken the edges of this just a little get focus because I'm going to use this piece of the tag I'll probably use that for something else now I have these little um, eyelet outlet breads and they're dragonflies and they they have the, they can come plain or they have these little coloured ones in the different shades but that, to me they don't show up enough detail so all I've done is I have put some black paint on it which makes it look pretty awful um, but when you sand it off you get an effect like this so you can see where you can get you get detail on it like that they come like that which don't, doesn't show up much and the first stage of that is put on some black paint and then when the paint, black paint is dry, you sand it off and it will go into all the cracks on it. And these brads are particularly good because they have these little brad backs on them. Which means that when you put them onto this piece of card here, which is my paint, my tag, I can actually sit them out because I'll put the hole in where it goes and I'll open the brad so that it will stand out in 3D effect and I'll put probably three of them on here. You can also put um, little word, I've been using a lot of this through these through the books which are also from Tim Holtz, um, his rub-ons, botanical I think it is, um, and it's got lots of words in here like for instance I could put in take flight across the bottom here or inspire beauty if I want to put words in there. But at the moment I'll just put these, attach these brads and then I'll insert it I'll attach the braids before I insert it in the box. Um, and remember, you can, you can always build these out. You don't have to put them right into the frame if you don't want to. Um, just put some three-dimensional sticky tape or something in there and hold it out. here to go in our locket so now I'm just going to alter the locket a little bit to bring it in more of the colors I'd like using the uh, vintage patinas from Ranger I'm going to use the Voss, the Verdigris and the Jade these are m m paints that are meant to be used on metal I've used them on other things but um, they adhere to metal really well you just lay them on thinly and um, I actually layer them on and dab them off and do all sorts of things with them um, but it's meant to be thin layers to get the effect This 
give it a fast dry and satin finish. Um, it's UV safe. I'll probably sand a lot of this colour off so you'll think why did I put that all on there and sand it off. But it's more I want it to get in there and change the look of the um, little locket album that I'm making. And after I'm finished I'm going to give it um, a coat of metal sealer. This is also put out by Ranger um, in the vintage range. And it's a, just a, a glaze that goes up the top. I actually use this for lots and lots of things, um, especially with metal. started out all this colour and I've just changed them up a little bit just to get a little bit of interest into them but sanded them back again so that I can bring out the metal highlights and I think they can look quite good. I could change these again so I'm not sure which picture I'm going to put them in so I won't glaze them yet. The second I've set I probably will give them a glaze. It keeps them from tarnishing or scratching. on there and you don't like it it's easy to use a little bit of um, alcohol and remove the which parts of the black and then you don't like but I like I like it with the more an old look a little bit of glaze over that and that'll be ready to go into its little box okay we have nine boxes to fill around the edges here and yeah, I've got I've started doing a few, but there's a, I just wanted to mention uh, to be very careful when you're deciding on the size that you make your book here. I don't know whether I mentioned it before, but you need good clearance on the side and at the top and at the bottom. And when you attach this particular ring, if you're using this particular one, to make sure you don't put the glue right across, otherwise it's going to be hard for it to flex and get uh, and open, which doesn't matter because you can still put them on but you won't be able to open it up and close it if that's what you want to do. And don't glue your boxes in until you have filled each scene. It just makes it a lot easier. So we'll start at the beginning, which is box number one. Okay, we have scenes. These are scenes that I have created using another video uh, where I make cards. And it's I think it's called Colouring with Tim Holtz Distress inks and I've just used some of the ones that I've made and cut them into pieces. They go in nicely with the wallpaper stash um, cardstock in the in the stash. It you can use all of those if you wish. It's just that whenever I make something like this it's very personal so there's reasons why I put certain things in there. I'm not randomly picking things to go in there. They actually have a meaning to us. So this is one that I've used and you can see it will go great with the others but you don't have to um, you don't have to do these scenes if you don't want but they do look great so check out that video so the first one I'm going to do is one that you've seen or already um, and I'm going to have the theme of these dragonflies uh, going through these are just ones from Eyelid Outlet Brads and I, I, you saw this before, and the only thing I've done is I've added some pearl sprays to the side of it. And you can buy these. I have some in the shop as well. And I just colour them up how I want. And I've just moved the pearls around up to make it look like bulrushes. 
put the take flight on there. It's got a bit of crackle paint going on down there. So that is going to slip into that box. Now when I've made these scenes, I have edged them. And I have also already uh, fast finished them using the fast finish decoupage. Because I like my projects, as you know, to be very strong. And I just want a bit of reflect in there so it doesn't get look all dark and, and dingy. So that's the first one I'm going to do. And basically, I'm not going to show you me gluing all these things in because you know how to do it. I'm going to be using the quick dry tacky glue from Arlene's. I really like this a lot. I was I, I love the Scott quick dry as well, but some people had trouble getting it out of the uh, bottle and it was too thick. This is not. It's great and the top always works. It's just wonderful. I really like that. So that's what I'm going to be using to glue it down. So that'll be my first scene. Go into the box. Um, and it'll just sit like that. My next one up on my list is one that with the bird. So it'll be this one. I've arranged these boxes how I like them. You can put them how you like them. But you need a certain balance and you've got to think about where your eye is going to go and um, that's the reason why I have that so that this big one comes next after my scene here because this is quite a, f a focus apart from this but I wanted to change it up near the bottom here so I've swapped the positions of those two so it's not too uniform In this particular one, I'm going to use the tree scene, basically. Um, I'm going to put in a word, and I'm going to brad that through so that it sits in the back. Um, I have used both vintage patinas and alcohol inks to get this bird the colour that I want. So that's going to go in there. And I'm going to use one of the flowers that I put, I haven't decided which one, you'll see once I've put it all together, I'm using one of these flowers that are a part of this botanical range. And you can see I've also coloured those up with those vintage patinas and I've coated all my metal embellishments in here. Every one has been coated with the vintage glaze so that it doesn't tarnish so it stays that same colour. Because um, this is actually going in one of the scenes and it's brass and I've sanded it off so I've got all the nice colours coming through but if I was to leave it because it's solid brass it would just slowly um, go dark again. So I haven't decided which one of those I'm going to put in there but that's going to be within the next scene. The one after that is this one here that we've already started and you see I've bought the, um, I might get you closer, we'll see photos at the end. Um, I bought the dragonfly theme back in again. This again is one of these nature um, adornments, not botanical, it's called nature adornments, that I've coloured up. And I've also made this using his cork files. Uh, the small size, the large ones won't fit. And I've just gathered flowers and put them in there and put a little bit of, um, I think it was uh, flower soft actually, in the bottom of there, wound a bit of wire around the bottom and it's going to sit in there and make a really cute little seam. Now there are, re I won't go into the explanations about why I've used these things or these particular flowers, but there are reasons why I've used this that pertain to personal things to our family. So that will be the next one. The next one on the list is the uh, cat scene. I think I'll use this cat scene. Now this is also another lot of stamping I did in a previous video. Um, I think that one's in the graphic 45 boxes, but I'll get Jason to put which one they come out of in case you're interested. And this, I think, is a Crafty Secret stamp that I've coloured again with the Distress Inks and showed you what I've done. But with that, I've actually cut it up so we have... And I'm layered them back using um, the scrapbook adhesive 3D foam squares. They come in thin and thick, so you can actually vary the, the degrees of how thick and thin you want this to sit into your scene. Um, I'm probably going to use this one behind it. Um, and 
it's going to have a little cat in there. So that is going to be the next container. And you'll see it together at the end. This next one is just going to be, I'm going to sit the scene a little forward because you don't have to have them all sitting in the back. I'm going to dimensionalize it a little. And I just, you'll see it in the placement and in the end photos. I'm just going to have this sitting over the top. Um, a dragonfly flying over. I may put a little one in the background. I haven't decided yet. So that's going to be the next scene that I make. Um, the one following that is going to be a locket. And you've seen me start to make this locket the difference being that the scene is this I've attached the chain because I want you to be able to pull this out of the book but it not be detached from the book I've attached that so I've attached the dragonfly through the chain to the back but I've really amped up the thickness of this I've used some really strong double-sided sheets to put another piece of cardboard on the back and when I've put the brad through this has also got double-sided tape over it so it fixes it in place because if this happens to be tugged you don't want it pulling out of your box and I'll adhere it down into my box really well um, so that it fits in and this is the locket that will be attached you won't actually see the chain because in this this one I have um, It'll, it'll be covered by one of these um, titles, which are also a Tim Hulse product, the label clips that fit perfectly over this. And it'll give it a little something for this to sit behind. Um, and you won't be able to see the chain in the background of it. But the chain that I've used on this, because it's a rather pretty chain, is actually also Tim Hulse chain. It's his lace chain. Um, so that'll just pull out of there and it has an album in it, which is over here uh, And I've shown you that before and it's both double-sided and it'll go in there and attach up And it'll be sitting in my box behind there. So that's the next one. I'm going to be doing the one after that is actually going to be a ocean scene um, and I'm going to be using this one that kind of looked like it had seagulls in it in the background. It's, it's I've filled up a little cork bottle. Tim Holst has these little bottles, um, cork files in all different sizes. And again, I've as I did with the one, I put the little flowers in, and I've wrapped some of that wire around it, which is just a real uh, little craft wire around there. I've filled it with shells. I've got gone fishing on there. And I've got some power shells. I'm not sure what I'll put down, but these are all just going to be glued in. Um, jandal, etc. to go into that one. Now, I, if I do it, I may show you. Once I've got all these glued down in there, and my bottle, and my background scene, I may put in some embossing powders, and I'll be using the Distress embossing powders because it's got a nice rough sandy look. And just having it go up and around here a bit and spill out here a little on the edge, up the edge of this, just so it looks like it's in sand to give you that whole impression of it being a beachy scene. Um, I don't think you need to watch me do all that, but you might like be interested in seeing how I just um, get a brush, use the embossing ink, put it all through there and then just pile up with a mixture of colors of the distress embossing powder don't be tempted to use one it looks boring sends all different colors so mix a few of them together and just pop them in there and let them melt down it hopefully it looks cool hopefully i don't heat that up and bust it because <laughs> that can happen anything can happen when i start doing things so that's going to be the next thing the next one um, a little bit more complicated um, this middle size one I think I'm going to be using one of these leaves that I've made that's also another video um, that's on YouTube that I've done how to do the leaves um, and I, it's going to have a scene in the back I forget which one it's here somewhere I think it's this one um, and then I'm going to have a leaf in there I'm going to use this bird it's one of these birds from making memories I still have some in the shop um, they're, they're just really sweet 
and it goes with the whole look of what I'm doing. So I'm going to have the bird in there. I'm, like I said, I'm not sure how I'm arranging all this yet. And I've also used some petaloo flowers. Um, this one, I forget which color is this, which color is this one? Wild Mini Boss and Paprika. Now these are quite, they're dimensional but they're flat. So I have actually covered them with Fast Finish, which it, again is that decoupage glue. But I've squeezed them up so that I'll be placing those around down the bottom here with some leaves. Um, I haven't decided if I'm putting words up there yet. Uh, so I'll be making a little arrangement in the bottom of there. But literally, this, this is not complicated. Um, I'm just going to stick those in. And I may use um, leaves in there I, uh, to, to give me green. Or whatever, I haven't really decided. But this is not a complicated thing to do. So you don't need to see me do that step by step. And you'll be able to see the photos at the end. The next one is... A scene it's actually a rural scene and it's this one here and what I'm going to do is have that scene in there because this particular one I really wanted it and it's off a tag and it's not quite wide enough we're just going to disguise that now everybody who knows New Zealand knows that having sheep is a bit of a joke so I'm going to put a, um, a sheep in there I've got this lovely little um, embellishment it's part of another making memories one which when you saw this scene it's from the same pack and i've actually colored i'm not sure i'm going to use this i've actually colored that one up too it's got it reads on there uh, she got three wishes um so i've colored that up with with a vintage patina so it goes with other pieces so i'm not sure whether i'll use that but this pack um, is called can't see not sure you have to see it online um, and this has got this little dream one in there and tiny brads and the brads I'll be using are Tim Holtz mini brads because they fit in there and his Tim Holtz long fasteners because the colors are right and on the long fasteners they've got that nice long tail on them so so that's going to go up there and to disguise this bit on the edge here I'm going to be using some um, stuff that looks like trees and bushes so I'll be putting that in and around somehow and arranging it but again easy all I'm going to do is pull off bits and stick them in and around and make sure um, I've got continuity by bringing some in the bottom here um, I just got to make sure I don't cover my gate because I love that gate that scene means something to us um, and that's that one and that's the last one um, so I'm going to put that all together if you have any questions for me that you really want to know um, something about what I've used in here and I haven't mentioned it before, um, just send me a, a message and um, I'll get back to you. And all the photos will be at the end.
keep on this beach scene and I wanted a little bit more colour in there. Even though I have covered this with a fast finish, I'm going to have to use archival inks. And I'm just going to do it on a brush. I'm just going to bring in a couple of colours because I want it to look a little bit more sunny. And I'll just colour, put some colour back into this. having a giveaway and it's no secret that my favorite products are Randa Industries products and Tim Holtz products. I absolutely love them. So I'm going to be giving away, it's a worldwide competition, but I'm going to be giving away the th volume three in the compendium of curiosities, which is chock full of yummy things. Um, did all Tim Holtz range products in there. So we're going to give that away um, to to be in the draw to win this, and it's going to be a purely random draw, um, leave a comment here, have, be a subscriber. Um, it would be really great if you could like us on Facebook, or alternatively leave a comment on the Art of Craft blog, and I'll have those links in the description. You don't have to do all three. Um, but it would be really nice if you could like us on Facebook and um, leave a comment on our blog so I know who you are um, and we, if you win we will contact you and get your details and get it out to you it's going to run for a month and it's the 29th of April 2014 at the moment so as soon as the month runs out we will be sending this out to whoever wins it it's to say thank you we really appreciate the support that you you give I really appreciate the support that you give me and um, it encourages me I love teaching I love encouraging people to get fun out of their art and if you're anything like me it takes you to wonderful places where you when you're creating this is a sneak peek at the next project which is coming up very soon because as you can see I'm right into making it and it is a new take on one of Tim Hulse's new folios, which is really cool. So that's coming up. Hope you'll join me for that. <laughs>